Hey, what's up everybody? I'd like to welcome you into another Juice tutorial. And today what we're going to do is part two of building our synthesizer. And what we're going to do today is mainly concern ourselves with getting some of the code a little bit more fleshed out. We're not going to worry about making sounds today because I want to save that for the next tutorial. I don't want this to be one long extended tutorial where people have to search through and find the bits that they need. It's better to break it up into a couple different ones so people can just kind of watch, digest it a little bit, and go on to the next one and pick and choose what they need to learn. So we're going to do it that way. Main thing we're going to do today is just get the MIDI input working properly so I have a MIDI board uh, a MIDI keyboard connected. So we're going to just jump into it. The code that we're using is the same code that we had from the last one where we did a kind of basic juice framework, uh, the, the, the basic synth framework that we needed just to get a synthesizer built. Uh, if you don't happen to have that code, I also have it on GitHub, so you can download it there. I'll go ahead and post the link below. So without further delay, we're going to start in synth voice. So if we just scroll up here, okay. First, first thing that we're going to add is an, a, a piece of code that I've kind of come up with myself. This is something that I think I, I think I got this from the example, uh, the example code from the Juice synth that's in the examples when you download Juice. And what what this is, this was a little bit confusing for me at first, but basically what they what they do here is we have this boolean called can play sound. So it just returns whether it can play or sound or, or it can't. And what they've done is they've used what's called the dynamic cast in this part to return if, uh, if the cast is successful, then it returns true. And if it doesn't, then it returns false. So not a piece of code that I can really take credit for, but uh, I think it's quite clever. So what we can say here is we can, re we can do return and then dynamic cast. And then the type of dynamic cast that we're going to do is synth sound pointer. And then we're just going to put sound here. And then we're, what we're going to say here is not equal to null pointer. Okay. So what that means is that we're trying to cast the sound as the class synth sound okay back to our to our synth sound to our synth sound class and if that cast is successful then this is going to return true otherwise it's going to return false and it won't be able to play the sound okay so that's the best explanation that I could give you for that part if somebody has a better or more concise explanation I would love to hear it and please leave me a comment below because I'd love to hear a um, a really good explanation for that or alternatively, what other things we could put in that in that code space that would provide us that that same functionality. So, next thing that we're going to do is we're going to move to uh, this, our start note method, and this is where we're going to define what happens when we hit a note on our keyboard. So, first thing that we need we need to think about okay, well, when I hit a key, when I hit a key, I would like for my oscillator that I'm going to build in the future to play a frequency so I'd like it to play at a frequency but how am I going to get the correlation between the key that I hit and the frequency that's going to come out of the oscillator so that's what we're going to do now first thing that we're going to do is I've set up a global variable called frequency and then I'm just going to set that here I'm going to say frequency equals now, if we go into the Juice API, okay, you'll see I just happen to be on it here because I searched for it earlier. Okay, we're in a class called MIDI Message. Okay, and then if I put in Hertz, we have a method here called MIDI Note in Hertz. Okay, so what we can do is we can get, we can take a look at the MIDI note that I press and then find out the equivalent the equivalent frequency that that oscillator needs to play at and then eventually put that in when we create a an oscillator so what i can say here is frequency equals midi 
message dot get MIDI note. I think it's get MIDI note in Hertz. My audio complete isn't isn't helping me out here. Get MIDI note in Hertz. Why isn't my auto complete working? What's up with that? Get MIDI note in Hertz. Yeah, that's fine. And then I and then here, what I can do is I can just put my my input MIDI note number. Okay, so I can just say MIDI note number. Oh, there there it is. My auto complete showed up. Great. And then what we'll do is we'll also do a uh, a C out as well. Just just so we can test this to make sure that our input MIDI is working properly. And I could just say C out the MIDI note number. And then that should that should happen when I press a key. Okay, in stop note, I just have this. Oh, what's going on here? Did I miss something? Or is that just Xcode doing what it does best? Mini note mess mini mini message does not refer. Oh, is this Is this what I needed to do? I think that's what I needed to do. Let me just try this. Okay, we're good. Okay, great. Yeah, I just needed to... So this is referring to the MIDI message class and then get MIDI note in Hertz, okay? And then what I've done is I've done a C out for the MIDI note number. So what happens is when I press the key, then the MIDI note number should get out, come out the console. And stop note, for now, I've just got a, a method called clear current note. So that's just going to clear the note that's going to clear the node after I stop playing it and then render audio block render next block that's going to be used within our audio callback I'm not going to worry about doing anything there just yet that'll be for the next tutorial okay so that's it for synth voice so now if we come back to the processor okay so just a quick reminder we have this synthesize this synthesizer object that I've created called my synth got a synth voice called my voice okay and then we're just going to go ahead and use those in our plugin processor so the first thing that we need to do is that if we if we press a, if we press a note or if we instantiate another instance of our synthesizer we don't want any garbage or uh, any samples that have been there from our last remaining key press to to be remaining there before we press when we press the next note so what we need to do is we need to clear those so we're going to clear voices it's my synth dot clear voices so we have this object my synth clear voices okay and then we're just going to go through and we need to think about okay well do we want this to be a monophonic synthesizer which would just have one voice or do we want it to be polyphonic where it's going to have more than one voice more than one key that we could press at the same time and make chords and so on and so forth uh, we'll just make this a five we'll make this a five voice voice synthesizer for now so we got four INTI i equals zero i is less than five because we're going to have five voices i plus plus and then we're going to say my synth add voice voices my autocomplete always seems to stop when i when i have a method that i can't quite recall so i'm just going to go back here to the api go to synthesizer i think it's called add voice yeah add voice Add one voice no s here so and then I can say new synth voice okay oh 
a type two fours. That's what's going on here. Okay, cool. We're fine. Okay, then we just need to clear the sounds. So we got my synth, clear sound. And then we need to add the sounds. So we got my synth, add sound, new synth sound. Okay, I'm just going to build that real quick, make sure that we're good to go so far. Okay, great. Um, another thing that I'm gonna point out real quick uh, that just in case you don't remember, uh, I've set this up to debug, de debug, debug using the Juice plugin host. So just a reminder of how to do that. If you go to product in Xcode and then scheme, edit scheme, then this little window comes down here. And then you got executable. What you do is you just hit this little tab that says other. And then what you can do is you can go to your plugin host. So this one, I'll put applications, juice, examples, plugin host, builds, Mac OS X, build, debug, plugin host. That's where my executable is. I could just choose that. So what happens is that when I when I build this, then the plugin host opens up, then I can log I can I can load the plugin directly into the plugin host and just do my testing directly in there without having to load it into a DAW. So so we're fine there. Now we need to go to our prepare to play. So this is what happens when we're getting ready to start using our plugin. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a variable. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to use a variable called last sample rate. So we go double sample rate and then first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set this variable last sample rate to what our sample rate is okay now the reason I'm doing this is well it's mainly because I saw somebody I saw somebody else do it and I thought that it might be a good idea I'm thinking my, my thinking behind it was that if, let's say that we suddenly changed sound cards or something happened and we needed to, and the sample rate of the sound card suddenly changed, if we have that connected to our synthesizer and that changes all of a sudden, my, my thinking is that it was, is that it could cause it to crash. So... This is why this is why I think that we're storing it in this other variable called last sample rate. Okay, so that's that's my thoughts on that. If anybody else has any any thoughts on that, I'd love to hear them. So we got my synth. Then we need to set current playback sample rate. Then I'm just going to set that to last sample rate. Okay, so we don't have a sample rate that's constantly changing. And I think we're done there. Let me just check my notes here. Oh yeah, we have this other method that I saw. It's called ignore, ignore unused. So per block. So so what this what this method does is that this will clear out or ignore unused samples from the last last key that we pressed okay so that we don't have any garbage remaining from our last key press okay so we're good there so now the last thing that we need to do is just go down to our audio callback which is here process block okay and then we can just clear out we can just clear out any um, any garbage that we had from before and then we can just say we can just use our process next audio let me find let me find what what it is render next block that's what it is 
So we got render, next block. Okay, and here it wants our buffer, so we can just put buffer here. Then we got, oh, I got the wrong one here, I think. There are two different ways we can call this. Next, audio block. Oh, now it doesn't want to autocomplete for me. Oh, come on. Let's just go render next. Do I got that? Do I got that right? Sorry about this. Render next block, not render next audio block. Render next block. Okay, I'm not sure. Oh, I know why. I'm sorry. Sorry about this, guys and girls. Uh, it's got to be my synth, so we got so we're talking about my synth, okay? And then render next block, so now we should be good. So then we got the buffer, which is here. Then we got our we got to put in our MIDI messages, so we got MIDI buffer MIDI messages here. We're starting from sample sample zero, and then number of samples is buffer. So we just need to get our our uh, our buffer size here, and I think that's everything. Pretty sure that's everything. So I'm just gonna build this here. Clear buffer. Uh, I'm just gonna take this out for now. Or it's buffer dot clear. I believe there we go. Buffer dot clear. I knew there was something wrong there. Okay, so let's let's build that again. So our host should come up now. There's our host. Okay, so if you right click, here's our list. Here's a list of all of our plugins here. I'll go to your company. And then go to the synthesizer with the which is juice juice synth framework and if i just connect this don't worry i'm not going to worry about connecting the audio outs because the because we don't have any audio to put out yet now if i press a key the midi note should come up here okay and as you can see if if, if we take a look at the console okay then just bring this back up as i press a key the MIDI note is coming up. So we have MIDI input coming in from my MIDI keyboard now, which is excellent because now we all we need to do is concern ourselves with creating our sounds and uh, creating our functionality and the callback loop and parameters and automation and all that stuff. But now we've got kind of the basic functionality of it working. Okay, so just a reminder, here's the MIDI input. So if you just double click here on MIDI input, then this is how you set your uh, MIDI keyboard to to come into the plugin host. You can just check or uncheck here. I just have this MIDI keyboard Q49. Okay. And I think that's it. So if you have any questions or you have any feedback to add, I'd love to hear it. Uh, also, be sure to give me a thumbs up as well if you get a chance because that just really helps out with getting more subscribers to the page. And don't forget about our Telegram group which is where we have a bunch of developers of, of, of all different levels. We've got everybody from people that are just getting started with C++ and curious about audio development all the way to people that have been doing it for years. We have a professor that uh, used to work at Bell Labs. Bell Labs is like the place where <laughs> they, they basically were the first ones that were able to create musical notes from uh, from a computer, which is really extraordinary. But we have a we have a professor in there that used to work at Bell Labs, and a whole bunch of different levels. And so we're just sharing ideas, asking each other questions, and um, sharing information. So it's really good, and I encourage you to join. So if you have any questions or anything, just drop me a comment below. And otherwise, I'll see you next time where we're going to start adding sounds and adding more functionality to our synthesizer. So until then, I'll see you soon.